Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with probably the most important message you'll hear as an investor right now. In fact, what I'm going to show you in this video, how to invest $1,000 in 2022 and five stocks to buy, honestly, you're going to hear that on a lot of other channels. But what I'm going to tell you right now, you're not hearing anywhere else. And it's the one thing you need to hear. You are being tested. The stock market is crashing and testing investors to see who has the intestinal fortitude, the guts to keep on investing, to see if you continue to do that kind of quality analysis that we do here on the channel to find those strong long-term investments and look past the short-term noise and the pain. Understand though, even with that analysis, when the market crashes, everything will crash with it. Shares of Amazon fell 95% to just $5.60 each in the dot-com crash to 2001. Apple, hardly a housing bubble stock, fell 59% to less than $3 a share on a split-adjusted basis in 2009. The best thing you can do is to have that faith in your convictions, the faith that comes from that good analysis. Hold on to the best stocks and know that that analysis will prove you right. Shares of Apple have returned 5,700% to those that held on through that 2009 crash. And Amazon has returned 56,000% since 2001, turning a $1,000 investment into half a million dollars. Nation, do not give in to the fear of a stock crash. Stay strong, keep investing, and you will make money. All right, ready to get started here, but before we do, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. In this video, I'll reveal the five unstoppable market forces affecting stocks this year, which is going to push stocks higher and which could drag it lower. For each, I'll show you a stock to buy for a 2022 portfolio that can survive. Stick around and towards the end of the video, I'll show you how to invest $1,000 in a portfolio to make money no matter what happens to the market. Our first market trend for investing in 2022 is the big one, rising interest rates. The Federal Reserve, the nation's central bank, dropped us rate to almost zero during the pandemic and pushed trillions of dollars into the economy. Now it's reversing that stimulus. Those higher interest rates are likely to eventually push us into a recession that causes the next stock market crash. In fact, the Fed raising interest rates is one of the three most reliable factors that have preceded recessions in the past. Now, while a recession would hit all stocks, there is one sector of the economy that does well with higher interest rates. Banks and other financial companies make their money borrowing from you at those low deposit rates and then lend that money out at higher long-term rates. The rate on the 30-year mortgage has nearly doubled in the past 15 months, increasing the spread of profits for commercial banks. You could go with those mega cap banks here like Wells Fargo and Bank of America, but I also like the New York Community Bank Corp, ticker NYCB, for its valuation and 6.7% dividend yield. The bank is a leading producer of multifamily loans in New York with 50 years in the market and is aggressively expanding nationally with its Flagstar Bank acquisition announced last year. It now has nearly 400 branches and $87 billion in assets across eight states. Shares trade for just 0.72 times book value, which is well below most banks. And for example, Wells Fargo trades for 1.05 times its book value. Bank of America trades for a price of 1.2 times book. So with NYCB, you're getting an upside potential on that appreciation along with the dividend. We'll get into that next market trend, but I also want to personally invite you to get the weekly bow tie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community. So look for that sign up link below. Now it is those interest rates that will eventually tip us into recession, but there are some market trends supporting the economy. And the biggest one here, the fact that consumers and consumer spending is still very strong. Consumer spending makes up 70% of the economy. So it's always important to know how this is developing and, and there's no better resource than what the banks are saying when they report their earnings each quarter. In its most recent earnings, JP Morgan reported credit card spending jumped 29% in the first three months of the year versus the same period last year. A part of that was a 64% increase in spending on travel and dining and consumers are anxious to get out and spend their money. The bank also reported credit card balances increased by 15% over the quarter, so people aren't worried about a next coming recession. 
The average card balance was still below 2019 levels, but people are back to spending like they did before the pandemic. And despite higher credit spending, deposit savings for consumers and small businesses were also up 15% in the quarter. And consumers still have plenty of cash and aren't likely to pull in their spending anytime soon if they're having rising savings accounts. Add in here the job market with unemployment at historic lows and rising wages, and you get a very strong environment for that consumer spending and the economy in 2022. Now, on that increase in credit spending, I like Discover Financial Services, ticker DFS, for its exposure to that trend. Discover pays a 1.7% dividend yield, well above the yield you're going to get on competitors like MasterCard or Visa, and the price of just 6.7 times earnings puts it in value territory. But one thing I want you to understand, folks, is we're talking about stocks to buy and how to invest in these market trends, but the most important part of being an investor is not making those big mistakes. I wanna share an analogy that changed how I think about investing, something I wrote about on my blog, mystockmarketbasics.com, and I'll link to that in the description below. Then we'll get back to our list of market forces. More than anything else though, Nation, investing is like playing tennis. Now, I don't know much about tennis, and it shows whenever the wife and I play a match. I try to play like Andre Agassi, hitting the ball as hard as I can, and it usually just goes flying over the fence. My wife, on the other hand, she knows the amateur's game in tennis is about just getting the ball over, not trying to be the hot shot, and not making the big mistakes. Nation, with investing, if all you do is try for those big shots and get rich, you're gonna make the big mistakes and you're going to lose money. The smart game, the amateur's game, may not be even trying to time the market or these short-term market forces. Let the professional money managers try to time the market and prove that they're worth their fees. You win this game by not making the mistakes that come with it, by investing in a long-term portfolio like the one I'll share with you towards the end of the video. Another major trend in 2022, the commodity price shock on the Ukraine invasion. The price of oil surged to $130 a barrel earlier this year and is still trading around $100 since March. Along with it, the price of grains like wheat and barley have also jumped higher and every investor needs some kind of commodity protection. Now the price of oil is likely to come down to a range of between $75 to $90 a barrel if we get some kind of a, a negotiated settlement between Russia and Ukraine. But, but even at that price, oil explorers are gonna be cash flow machines. This research is a little dated, but still shows the cash flow power some of these oil stocks have at $70 plus in oil. This is the break-even price for the major oil companies with the 2021 break-even shown in red dots. Notice most of these are profitable with oil as low as $60 and below, and a few of them, Chevron, RDS, and Total, are profitable at $50 a barrel. And oil companies just aren't spending as much as they used to on that new exploration. Instead, they're returning that cash flow to shareholders in big dividend increases and share buybacks. Even after the run in shares, I still like Chevron, ticker CVX, on its low cost of production and 3.3% dividend yield. Chevron increased its dividend by 6% this year and is still producing over $18 billion in free cash flow. Another factor here supporting the economy and the stock market, the fact that interest rates are still extremely low. Here's a chart of the rate of the 10-year treasury bond. The rate follows the Fed funds rate that we looked at earlier and, and most interest rates follow this. And what you see, looking back all the way to 1965, is that even though rates have been increasing this year, the cost to borrow money is still very low. In fact, economists estimate that the 10-year treasury rate has to get up to somewhere around 35 to 4% before higher interest rates actually start to drag on economic growth. So don't believe all these chicken little YouTube subscribers screaming the sky is falling from the economy just because interest rates are rising a little. Money is still cheap to borrow, spending is strong, and will be for the rest of 2022. On that environment, I like beaten down Groupon, ticker GRPN, one of the seven stocks I highlighted recently in a video on my largest investments. I like Groupon for a lot of reasons, on that consumer spending theme, on the potential for a takeover, and just from the steep valuation discount on the shares. On cash and investments held by the company alone, I think the stock could be worth $30 a share or more over the next year. One more market trend before we get to that portfolio of how to invest $1,000 in 2022. Another big one here, inflation. And consumer inflation jumped 8.6% in the year to last March, the highest in more than 42 years. And while it could start coming down a little, higher prices are here to stay. And the problem here is that inflation is actually starting to feed into itself, creating more inflation. People are now expecting prices to go up even more, so they're asking for higher wages to cover it. And with the job market as tight as it is, they're getting those wage increases. 
from this. Companies are raising their prices to cover the higher costs on everything from materials to wages and the cycle just keeps on running higher. A few stock sectors do as well against inflation as real estate. And one of my favorite here is Medical Properties Trust, ticker MPW. MPW is the second largest owner of hospitals in the world with 442 properties and that rare international exposure in a REIT operating in 34 US states and nine countries. And I really like the company's business model here. It buys those properties already owned by the healthcare providers and then leases them back to them for 20 year triple net payments. Now that frees up the healthcare provider to do what it does best, providing that service. And MPW takes care of the property and has that long-term tenant. Plus that triple net lease means that the tenant pays all property costs. MPW just sits back and collects the checks, so operational costs are extremely low. 99% of the properties have built-in rent escalators based on inflation, so the company is covered on that front. Shares pay a 5.9% dividend yield and trade for just 12 times on an FFO basis. Now you've got those five stocks and the five market trends for 2022, but building a portfolio that will make money means having a core and a long-term investments for that long-term growth. Here, I'm going to show you how to invest $1,000 in a portfolio that not only does well this year, but for years to come. The way we'll do this is to build a portfolio of three to five funds for that core part of your money, 40 to 60% of your money and those broad funds that are going to give you the market returns and the safety across different assets. Now that's going to smooth out anything that happens this year so you don't freak out and panic sell your stocks if the market crashes. And with the remaining portion of the portfolio, we're going to add five stocks for that long-term growth that are going to drive your returns for decades to come. On top of this long-term growth theme, we're going to add five stocks that we talked about in the video for that shorter term growth and the stability in today's stock market. We'll start with the Spider S&P 500 High Dividend ETF, ticker SPYD. The fund invests in 80 of the highest paying dividend stocks in the S&P 500, the biggest companies in the US and has returned 11.3% annually since its inception with a dividend yield over 4% a year. To that dividend fund, we wanna add a little growth here with the Vanguard Growth Index ETF, ticker VUG. Now that fund has produced a 16% annual return over the last 10 years and holds shares of 266 companies with a focus on that growth. Some of the best tech names out there like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, so you get that growth, but also the stability that comes with these mega cap companies. Now with those stocks, usually you want to add some kind of protection here with a bond fund. And I do like the Vanguard short-term bond ETF, ticker BSV, as an option. But by far the best opportunities in investing right now is the Series I savings bond. Now these are savings bonds you buy directly from treasurydirect.gov. So there are no fees and you can buy as little as $25. I-bonds have a built-in inflation protection, which means the interest rate has surged over the last year. I-bonds are now paying over 9% interest. So you've got the safety of bonds and you're guaranteed to get that return plus your money back and you won't pay state or local taxes on the income like with most bonds or, or investment returns. It's a return as high as stocks with the safety of bonds, which isn't something you get often. So these belong in every investor's portfolio. Now on those two stock funds and the bonds, I would add some real estate stocks and you can go with the fund like the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, ticker VNQ, or with a few individual real estate investment trusts. With just those three funds and the I-bonds, you're gonna get stock market growth and income. You'll get exposure to real estate for those inflation fighting returns and the safety of bonds to protect your money when stocks crash. On top of this, I would add five to 10 stocks for that long-term growth that are gonna to add to returns to your portfolio. Now, this list is just an example, five of the investments I'm making for the next decade and beyond. We won't go into each of these because I just posted a video on the seven stocks I have over $250,000 invested in my own portfolio. So, so look for that link in the description below for that full analysis. The four stocks and two cryptocurrencies here are my highest conviction investments for triple digit growth over the next decade. That gives you a solid long-term portfolio with safety and stability in that core portion and then the growth in those individual stocks. On this, you can add those shorter term stocks for a 2022 that we talked about in this video for a complete portfolio to invest $1,000. Click on the video to the right to see how to create a dividend snowball, how to invest to grow your income and live off your dividends. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.